Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. So in this video we are finally going to be setting up my new bullet journal for the year 2023 and I'm so excited to show it to you. I want to already give you a little disclaimer because I've been saying 2022 so many times so if I accidentally say that in the video just know that I mean 2023 of course. <laughs> So we're starting this whole setup by first looking at the notebook that I chose for the new year. I'm using the exact same notebook that I used at the end of this year. So it is this Mellow Days watercolor notebook. It has studded pages that are 160 GSM and it's honestly a pleasure to use with paint. If you would like to get this notebook or anything else from Mellow Days, I will have my 10% off discount code in the description and just know that I will get commission if you use it. But let's start with writing my name on the first page. I don't know what I should say about this. It was a really simple process, but this time I didn't actually sketch it, which is quite interesting. So for this whole setup, I used my Vanga watercolors and I used only one brush that came with the set and that worked really well. This set was gifted to me by Royal Talents and I've liked using it so far, so I would highly recommend that. And just know that all of my used products are always listed in the description and if something is missing just write a comment and i will try to get back to you asap first i started this whole process by erasing some of the harsh sketch lines that i had made beforehand because as you can see i made this pretty detailed sketch for my cover page and then i started mixing this kind of purpley red color for the flower that i was working on in the cover page so I always make a cover page when I start a new notebook. It's nothing like useful for me, but I just like starting this new chapter with a new and fresh painting. I like seeing the year in this big header and just seeing some sort of usually flowery illustration in the cover page. So I went with that as well here. And as you can see, I went with this reddish color for the flower. I actually don't know what this flower is called, but at this point I wanted to go with these kind of more vintage vibes and a little bit more elegant theme for my new bullet journal setup. And I really liked working on this cover page especially. So as you can see, I went with the base color first and then I started darkening some of the spots in the petals, especially the roots of the petals and also the edges. And I made these little lines across the petals and just tried to keep the middle point the darkest in the flower. And I'm really just going in with a little bit of color and then I'm just using a damp brush and kind of blending all of those together. And this notebook is really perfect for that because I've compared this notebook to some of the other ones that I own. And this notebook really has the perfect paper with watercolors because if you add some color to the paper, the color stays blendable for a long time. So you don't have to work super fast and just like hurry and run for your life to start blending things. You really can just add some color color to the paper and then go with a wet brush on top of that and still make it really nice and blended. I also made the middle of the flower with this orangey tone and I'm adding some more details later on. One thing about my spreads is that I always try to go for some sort of balance. And here in the spread on the left side, as you can see, I'm making this illustration that has a lot more white in between all of the colors. And then on the right side, I will have this key page that will have a colorful paper glued onto the page. So I wanted to make sure that there was enough white space in between all of the leaves, but I still wanted to make sure that, you know, that space wasn't all even. So some of the leaves overlap each other a bit. I also wanted to make sure that some of the elements in this painting go over the sketch of the header, the numbers that I had done beforehand. So it would all be this nice little cohesive set of elements in the spread. And that's definitely something that doesn't come to you naturally, I don't think. I think this is also just about practice and just doing something like this for a long time. Because of course, I've been bullet journaling now for over three years and that's pretty much the same amount of time that I've spent painting and creating art. So that has come a little bit more naturally to me now, but it definitely wasn't like that from the beginning. <laughs> 
But when I was painting the leaves, I first did the same thing as with the flower. So I just went with a lighter base color and then I started adding these darker details, especially on the root of all of the leaves. And I tried to make sure that with this painting, I would not overwork any of the details from the beginning. So I tried to make sure that with all of the details and elements that I added, I first made a lighter color base and then I started building the colors on top. So I wouldn't just accidentally go with a really dark base and then realizing that I cannot really take anything away. Since I like the vintage look, I wanted to add some brown and some yellow and red shades into the leaves as well. So I pretty much just added like hints of those colors into the leaves. So they're not just like one color and only just green. I always add flowers into my new bullet journal setups, but this time I wanted to really go with a little bit more elegant look because I feel like I've often made these really vibrant and colorful themes. I'm not sure if I like this one as much, especially I will talk about my struggles a little bit when we go forward, but I think I liked at least this cover page a lot more than some of my other cover pages. But I definitely noticed in some of my pages that I made for the setup that this style and this kind of vibe that I was going for just took a little bit more time than what I anticipated or at least I always felt like the pages that I kind of spent less time on I was like oh I could have worked on this for longer and just made that style come through a bit more so I was struggling with this a little bit but I always like these vintage vibes and I think especially in the cover page it came through i'm not sure about all of my other spreads this is not the most cohesive theme that i've ever done but anyway i still enjoyed setting this up a lot by the way if you missed my last video i just posted on wednesday i will have that in the description down below it is my 2022 bullet journal flip through so make sure to check that out if you haven't already when I was done with the stems for the flower and leaves, I added this kind of black details on the middle of the flower and I just pretty much darkened the little circle around it. And then I took my Tombow Fudenosuke and started working on the actual header for the spread. I ended up changing something up with this one because I first was thinking that I want to just, you know, halfway fill all of those header numbers in. As you can see, I made that kind of like stripey look, but I ended up actually just filling them in completely after because I think that this spread needed more contrast. But as you can see, I just went with this kind of bulky serif font. I really tried to make sure that there was like nice variation between the thicker areas and these really thin areas because sometimes I think that has been the problem when I've made my headers before. So I tried to work on this pretty carefully and I also made a good sketch beforehand and I would always recommend that to you as well. Please don't start writing these kinds of letters or numbers on your page without a sketch. And here's the golden watercolor I used for this border around my key page. It's this red gold shade and I really love how it looks on this page and it really ties the whole spread and all of my paintings together. It also has the most beautiful shine but you have to just reactivate it first with water but it's really easy to use so I would highly recommend getting one of these palettes too. And then I added this green, grayish, brown type of paper on to the page as well, kind of inside that golden border I just made. I actually used the same paper in my December setup. And this is actually not something that I was planning on doing because I was planning on using this darker brown paper with this theme because I think that that would have fit this vintage theme perfectly. But I was filming this on the Finnish Independence Day and all the shops were closed and I didn't realize that so I couldn't go to the store and pick up a new paper which maybe is more realistic to you guys as well when you're setting this up because not everyone just can go to a shop and pick up a random piece of paper so I went with the ones that I already had at home and I think it was fine not the perfect option for me but it's totally okay 
So I stamped the word key on the top of that little piece of paper and I just added my keys underneath that. I made a couple of mistakes writing the same thing twice. You know, all those <laughs> things that often go wrong, but it's okay. And as you can see, I'm also just writing this or adding this random piece of paper on top of that because I didn't like space out all of the keys accordingly and it just looked weird. So I just added that paper on top of that, kind of fixing that mistake, but it's okay. We all do mistakes. So here I am filling in those header numbers. I think this looked a lot better and as I was talking about that balance in my spreads, I think this definitely made that happen a lot more. I think this helped with that balance a lot because it looked a little bit like it needed some more black into the spread, so that worked a lot better. But that is it for my cover spread and next we are setting up my future lock that ended up being really busy. <laughs> um, my initial idea was to do a same kind of future lock that I've done in the past with having these horizontal rows of paintings and just writing the name of the month on top of that and adding those small calendars below. If you have watched any of my other new bullet journal setup videos you know what I'm talking about but I was just feeling like I've done the same thing now at least four times so I thought maybe it's time to change things up a little bit so I decided to actually make this spread vertical instead of horizontal and I'm not sure if that's like my favorite thing or not I don't think it really matters to me that much but maybe I would have liked the horizontal look a little bit more maybe that just adds the nice amount of empty space in between everything I, I feel like maybe this was just a little bit too weird for me <laughs> But as you can see, I taped those little areas and I'm basically just painting inside of them. And those tapes are just going to make sure that I will have these clean edges for all of those two paintings in this spread. And I was kind of struggling with the vintage vibes in this one because I was first having this idea that I would just paint all different kinds of flowers in all of my spreads and they would just kind of work together. But you know, like I said, I didn't have that same kind of paper that I was planning on having. So I was struggling with the vintage vibes a little bit because I just wasn't able to really make sure that all of the pages were cohesive. And so I decided that I would go with the same kind of flowers as in my cover page is definitely not the same flower but it's same kind of flower but I decided to go for this kind of pale yellow color instead and I think it worked okay but again it was lacking that cohesion that I was kind of intending on getting in these pages but it's totally fine so I sketched this whole painting beforehand and I added a couple of flowers in all of those two panels and then I was just pretty much just filling that area with leaves and I I don't know I'm just not the biggest fan of this I think it's okay but I just I think I was lacking planning in this whole setup because I did not really plan anything beforehand I was pretty busy so I planned everything the same day I was filming so not the best idea I guess in my future log, I will pretty much only add birthdays. I have only maybe two other dates that I will add in that I know I will do something because I think in February, me and my friend are going to be seeing first aid kits and then we're going to go on another festival this summer. So there's, those are pretty much the only dates that I have to add here, but uh, I don't really have that much space to do anything more anyways. So this small space really works for me in this future log. I feel like if you need more space, you can absolutely do this in two separate spreads and maybe have a Dutch door or something that would definitely work with this one. So when I take the tapes off, as you can see, we have these two panels of watercolor paintings and then I'm taking the golden watercolor as well as I did in my cover page and I was just basically painting the right kind of edge for those two paintings and then I started making my stamped header on the right side. By the way, I know you cannot see the shine of these watercolors, but I swear these are the most beautiful watercolors that exist. First I was thinking of stamping on top of the paintings as I usually do because I always add the header on top of the paintings in my setups but I decided to just add it next to it because I thought that maybe you couldn't see it on top of the paintings and I was afraid that I was gonna just like completely ruin the paintings anyway. <laughs> 
but I added that same kind of golden little line on the right side of the headers as well. I thought that maybe that added some nice balance again and just made the spread look a little bit more elegant again. Then I was using my Uniball Signo gel pen and I was just making all of my tiny calendars in this spread. And I'm pretty sure if I made a mistake, it was a tiny one. I didn't make any major mistakes and I always avoid those by first sketching all of the first and last numbers of each week beforehand. So if I do a mistake, I can already see it before, you know, it spreads further. <laughs> I know some people like to also add a year at a glance page in their bullet journals. I have never really needed to do that. I just feel like for me, it's too much like extra work because I already can see the year in this whole spread. I don't need to have another spread for that. But maybe if that like interests you or you feel like you need that, go ahead and add it into your bullet journal. But that is it for the spread for now. But I decided to add something later and you will see it then. But next we are going to be setting up a new spread and this is going to be all about goals and I wanted to have a little bit more free form type of tracking my goals and just writing things down in the spread because I've noticed that my goals pages don't necessarily work for me. First of all my goals are always really random like I don't really know how to set up goals for the whole year like that's not something that I'm good at and I feel like maybe I have to watch some videos on that or something because I really struggle with them like I never really write down goals and actually look at them the whole year and just like reflect back to them so maybe I have to find some ways to actually you know make those useful for me but I decided to make this kind of freeform goal spread that would have all of my goals and random things that I want to achieve this here on the left side and then I have some questions on the right side that I can write down beforehand and you know just think about what I want to do this year or the next year and what I want to achieve and also some fun things that I'm looking forward to doing next year because I know it's not only good to focus on just the kind of more time consuming and I don't know the more practical goals that you have for the year. I would, by the way, love to hear if you have any goals for the new upcoming year. I'm super excited because I always do the Yoga with Adrian 30 day challenge in January. I think I've done it for three years now, so I'm really excited to start my new year with that 30 day yoga challenge and just kind of get some routine into my life and just, you know, start the new year with a new fresh challenge that I know will make me so much happier. By the way, I would love to know if any of you are joining that as well. If you are, I will be thinking of you every day when I do my yoga routine. <laughs> So in this spread, I also decided to add that green paper on the right side so I can write all the questions on top of that. And I also did stamp the header on the left page. As you can see, I really liked that golden border, so I added it here too. I made it the same size as the green paper on the other side, so it would kind of match perfectly and yeah, it would be a nice symmetrical touch. Here I did the same kind of mistake as I did with my key page, so I just wrote those questions randomly onto the paper without thinking about the placement too much and I wish I would have thought about it more. Next, I'm working on my YouTube spread, which is basically just for planning and tracking and just making sure that I know what is supposed to happen each month with my YouTube channel. Again, this is not a spread that I use every single time and I, you know, flip back to you on a regular basis, but I am trying to get better and I think this spread works really well whenever you need to use it. So you don't need to use it every single day and still have it useful, you know. I know many of you don't do YouTube, so you could also have this spread for any type of work projects or school projects or things like that, whatever you need in your life. I just made the little minimalistic branch on the left side and then I stamped also the headers on the top of the page. I have loved using stamps recently. It's such an easy way to add your headers without having to stress over making them really weird and wonky and it's of course so much faster as well. 
One of the most important things for me in this YouTube spread is to have the calendar for the next six months that I am using this bullet journal for. So for example, in this spread, I have on the right side this little vertical calendar row from January to August, and I have one week per one dot space. So for each of the weeks, because I usually try to post maybe like once a week or maybe three times a month, something like that, but like usually one video per one week. So I can write a video idea on one of those dot spaces and I can always look at that calendar throughout the time that I'm using this bullet journal and I can see what I have planned for each week and each month. And I don't use it all the time. I might only use it on times where I'm really busy. For example, this December, I really needed that planning space. So it's definitely something that I don't need all the time, but I think it's necessary for me to have in my bullet journal. I would love to know if you have any of these pages that you feel like you always have to add in your bullet journal when you start a new one. It's always interesting to know what other people need and what their routines are like. But the next spread that I'm working on is my period tracker and my notes page. My notes page is basically just a page for me to write anything I feel like. It's kind of like a brain dump. And for that, I wanted to paint some different kind of flowers. So for the bottom middle of the page, I decided to paint these kind of purplish, purplish, is that even a, <laughs> even a word? These kind of purple red daisies. And I just wanted to work on something pretty fast. This definitely didn't take that long at all. I think I spend like 15 minutes on this painting but i feel like daisies are the most easy flowers to ever paint they can be so simple and so easy and so fast so i'm happy that i chose that flower for the spread so as you can see i just again did the painting the exact same way as all of my other paintings this month just did a base color and then started darkening the roots close to the middle point of the flower I also want to talk about my goals for this month a little bit, even though I said that I have trouble making goals. But one thing that I really want to do this year is to actually go ahead and make prints of some of my paintings, especially some of my Pantone paintings, because people constantly ask me if my Pantone paintings are for sale. And I always say they will be at some point, but not yet. But I would love to do that. I just think working on a new project like that is so much work, you know, just having to think about shipping, having to think about where I'm actually making the products and how I'm making the products. It is such a big thing to start thinking about as a person who has imposter syndrome, mind you. <laughs> so I've struggled with that throughout the year 2022, but I'm, I want to do it this year or the upcoming year. I just want to do it. <laughs> So I stamped the notes header on the right side of the spread and then I made my period tracker header and I kid you not, I made the same exact mistake twice in the spread. In this header, I stamped the letter E twice the wrong way. I cannot believe I did the same mistake and like with the same letter, I, I don't know how that happened but of course it was an easy fix i just cut and glue some of that same paper on top of it and just stamped it again but i actually almost made the same mistake for the third time so i'm happy that didn't happen <laughs> If you're wondering why I have a note section on the left side as well, that is just for my period tracker. I would also, by the way, really recommend using some sort of period tracker if you are a person who menstruates. I think it's highly beneficial for you to track your periods and any kind of symptoms you might have. I have this kind of tracker here where I can write any of these symbols on and I have basically two spaces for each day so for example if I have my period and a headache at the same day I can just put all of those symbols to the grid and that's you know for me to watch and see if those symptoms maybe come back on the next month or something like that. That spread was like the most minimalistic thing ever. I wasn't planning on making this whole theme really minimalistic, but I guess that just accidentally happened. <laughs> I actually forgot to film me flipping the page to the next one, but here we are actually working on my next spread, which is for my swatches and also my grid spacing. So as you can see, I'm painting the same kind of flower here as I painted on my cover page. I made this kind of muted red colored 
flower here and some leaves again and I actually didn't bother just filming the whole leaf painting process again because I feel like I had painted the same kind of thing so many times in this video already so if you want to see how I made them maybe look at my cover page once more. <laughs> After my really rough bullet journal year and the fact that it actually ended on a good note, I'm really excited to start using a different bullet journal and see if I actually finish this one up. I feel like now that I have this new excitement for that, I feel like I might actually be able to fill these pages in, set up some goals and maybe look at this year a little bit more hopefully. And yeah, let's hope that this works for me and at least I can start this new chapter with my new bullet journal because it definitely always feels like that. But this page is for all of my pen swatches and watercolor swatches and I found this highly helpful in my bullet journal. So as you can see I made this really wonky little envelope here and I added these swatch cards in it. I made these swatch cards in my last new bullet journal setup video that I made so they basically just have all of my acrylographs, all of my gel pens, all of my brush pens etc and I just made one little swatch card for each of them and I can just you know refer back to them if I want to see like what color fits for what theme so I don't have to always watch things each time when I make a new theme or something. So here on the page next to it, I made these little flaps that hold my grid spacing page together. So I made this little sheet for my grid spacing in my last bullet journal setup as well. And this is the separate page that I can just take next to my journal if I want to refer back to it when I'm making a new theme or something like that. I really like having a separate page for that. And it's fun that pretty much the whole spread that I just made have elements that I can take to my next journal without having to redo all of those things again. But here we have the most simple thing. So I just made a page for my TV shows and movies that I have watched and also things I want to remember to watch throughout the year. It's a fun spread where I will just add all of my movie posters of the movies and TV shows that I watched. Then I went back to my future log and I attached the same paper here. I'm not sure if I like it. It's really busy, but I just feel like adding that throughout the whole process that I was working on this video. <laughs> But now we are getting to the end of this video and I will just quickly flip through all of the pages that I made in this one. Before I go, I just want to say that I really hope you have the most relaxing holidays and end of the year and I also hope your year starts the best way it possibly can. I really liked setting up this whole new bullet journal setup and I really hope you like this too. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a like and leave a flower emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!